the adorable uh, Chidima there giving us another of her wonderful uh, lyrics. All right, uh, you know, still on the program, it's time now for the newspaper's corner where we bring you the top stories on the front pages of uh, the Nigerian newspapers this morning. I'm looking at The Guardian now. The biggest story there is regarding what The Guardian calls uneasy calm in Kano's appeal court in Kano State, I should say, as appeal court affirms tribunal judgment sacking Governor Yusuf. Now, that's another, you know, banger, so to speak. First at the election petition tribunal where uh, the election of uh, Abba Yusuf was, um, you know, nullified. And now we are seeing uh, the appellate court also affirming that ju um, judgment. Of course, judgment, tragedy to democracy. That's according to the NNPP, the party of uh, the uh, the governor, so to speak. He has said he is going to appeal now, and we'll see how that pans out. Optimism, NPP, NNPP expresses optimism in Supreme Court upholding the people's will, it says. Other stories, their nomination of judges to Supreme Court without involving NJC invalid lawyers declare. Air power has disrupted terrorist network, says Vice President Shetima. Emir Fiele, former CBN governor, to spend four days in Kujay Correctional Center. Well, these and more stories are there. Check them out on The Guardian. Emmanuel. Now the trend for the newspaper review moves now to the nation newspaper. And the big story says, Appeal Court affirms Abba Yusuf Sark as Kanu governor. And uh, the rider there says, on easy calm as APC's uh, Nasiru Gawuna wins again. NMPP heads for Supreme Court says, verdict threat to democracy. And that's what is coming uh, from the NMPP uh, there. We know when uh, you win, it's a victory for democracy. But when you lose it, it's um, another ball game for politicians. Uh, will defeat you. Finally, there, Ganduja tells NNPP, court affirms uh, Bala Muhammad's uh, election as Bauchi governor. Uh, that's a big story there from the nation newspaper talking about uh, elections, election there. And our impatient doctor infected me with HIV at age 11. Uh, page 11 there of the nation newspaper. Mother lecturer gets later confirming professorship at Wake. Very pathetic. Page two of the nation newspaper. And court remands ex CBN governor Imefele in prison. Uzadi Maududo Diri gets certificate of return from INEC. Interesting stories on the front page of the nation newspaper. Okay. And the first news is next. Federal government, it says, Air Max 609 million dollar lifeline for tech entrepreneurs. That's uh, the first story just bef beside the masthead. And uh, Tinubu cancels 40% IGR deduction from universities. Allegation, judges collected $5 million bribe to sack me baseless. Another story there, still uh, a post-mortem kind of of the courts. Uh, Appeal Court affirms Bala Mohammed as Bauchi governor, terrorism responsible for suffering in the Northeast. That's according to the Vice President Kashim Shetima. Of course, the big story is still from the courts. It says, you remain sacked. Appeal Court tells Kano Governor Abba Yusuf affirming lower tribunal's verdict. The party uh, of uh, the ousted governor, so to speak, NNPP, rejects appeal court judgment and heads for the Supreme Court. APC will win again at Apex Court. That's from former Kano Governor Ganduje. Why appeal court sacked Yusuf affirmed Gawuna's election? You get all the details there. And Mobad, on the issue of Mobad, Naira Mali, Sam Larry released. And let's move on to Saturday Tribune now. The big story says, Mephili awarded 1.21 billion era contract to female CBN worker. That's a claim coming from the federal government, uh, page four of the Saturday Tribune there. And the writer here says, ex-CBN governor remanded in Kujay prison 
Tight security in Kano as a pay court sacks governor court okays Bauchi governor's election. Tinubu Council's collection of 40% IGR from Vasitas. Mubad Naramali Samlari regained freedom. I worked with Nikki Toby Committee, uh, 1999 Constitution was badly done. Page 8 there of uh, Saturday Tribune. Federal government says high cost of drugs worrisome. Very, very worrisome indeed. Uh, for those who are ill, we will know what the federal government there is saying. Okay. All right. So there we have it. The papers, uh, you know, have, you know, given us, uh, you mm. know, stories uh, that should make interesting reads uh, during the course of the weekend. So head over there now and get information, the needed information of all these topical stories. Coming up next on TBC Breakfast Saturday, we will be talking some more about the declaration by the Court of Appeal regarding the Zamfara State uh, Governorship election as the court declared the election inconclusive. Join us for this discussion after the break. Thank you very much for staying with us. The Court of Appeal, Abuja Division, has declared inconclusive the March 18 governorship election in Zamfara State, which produced Daud Alawal as the elected governor. A three-member panel of justices of the court in a unanimous judgment set aside the declaration of Daud Alawal of the People's Democratic Party as the lawfully elected governor. Justice Sibyl Baggi, who read the lead judgment, ordered that a fresh election be conducted at three local governments, uh, including Maradun local government area of the state and other areas where elections were either cancelled or didn't hold at all. The court also held that the use of IREV information to declare Mr. Lawal as governor in the absence of polling units results were unlawful, illegal and unconstitutional. Joining us now via Zoom is public interest lawyer GT Ogunye. Thank you very much, Mr. Ogunye, for joining us uh, on TVC Breakfast Saturday. Let's quickly have your thoughts on the uh, fallout of the judgment regarding the Zamfara State governorship election. Good morning, Nigerians. I think that <clears throat> what the Court of Appeal has done as an appeal tribunal uh, is pretty obvious. It just followed the law. Um, observers may be wondering when this seeming somersault uh, of the electoral system will stop from the court, but it won't stop if elections are not well conducted. And so what has happened uh, to Sanfara State is just that the court felt that the results, uh, there are no results in the three local governments. Now, usually when uh, the court or a tribunal comes to the conclusion that the number of registered voters uh, far exceeds the number of uh, uh, those who actually voted. In this case, uh, it was regarded that there are even no votes because uh, INEC didn't rely on uh, collated results, manually collated results, physically collated results from the three local governments in declaring uh, the results of the election and determining uh, who had won the election. And uh, in the absence of that, uh, relying on IRF portal to collect results uh, was unlawful and unconstitutional. And this decision um, is in tandem, is in sync with previous decisions uh, of the courts, including the Supreme Court, on the same subject, that there is no way sidestepping in the electoral system, in the resolution system, there is no way 
it is possible to lawfully sidestep collating results from the polling booths to uh, the ward level collation center to the local government uh, before you get to the state collation center in a gubernatorial election. And this have not occurred in Zavara State. The court had no hesitation in uh, declaring the election inconclusive. If the court had come to the conclusion that it will not matter anyway, the results uh, that should have been obtained, that should have been collated from the three local governments, uh, if election had held or election had not been cancelled in some parts of the local government, will not impact on the overall outcome of the election. The court will have reached um, a different conclusion that even if all the results were collected, it will not impact on the results because the margin of victory between the uh, governor now, uh, Dauda Lawal, and uh, the person who was removed from there, you know, electoral, uh, uh, electorally, was too wide to be breached by any outcome that will come from three, the three local governments. The court will not bother, the court will not waste the time, you know. But on this occasion, the court had come to the conclusion that it will impact on the outcome of the election. So that's why the uh, election was declared inconclusive and all that every time. All right, Mr. Ajiti Ogunye, uh, the Court of Appeal uh, declaring uh, the election in Zamfara inconclusive. Are we right to say that at the moment uh, that um, according to the law that uh, there's no uh, governor in that particular state? And what are the uh, other legal implications to this particular matter? There is a governor in the state. That is the position of the law. Uh, the time of appeal has not elapsed. Uh, if there is no further appeal, then uh, INEP will be free to conduct uh, the election, meaning that the equipment accepted uh, the outcome. And even until that equipment you know, uh, is um, uh, succeeded you know, by uh, a fellow contestant, contestant, the state will continue to be governed. In other words, once there is a decision of the court, except the court, you know, uh, gave an order specifically that the governor should vacate office, uh, the speaker should preside over the affairs of the state, and election should be conducted immediately, the governor will continue to act as a governor, pending the time an appeal might be lodged, and pending the time the matter will be conclusively resolved if an appeal is, uh, is lodged and another uh, uh, rerun election conducted, you know, to then impact on the uh, 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 outcome of the election uh, originally. That is the position of the law. Hmm. And, um, okay, so now, well, we haven't heard the say of the Supreme Court on this matter, you know, but just if the apex court also affirms the position of um, the fact that elections would need to be uh, reconducted so to speak in these three uh, particular local government areas i, I wonder what uh, implications you see already we have an uh, arrangement of off-cycle elections will this fall into that category and you know still on the issue of implications that elections may have to be reheld elections that have already been held and everybody thought they were concluded but now having to go through the process again but that is if the supreme court rules uh, in that direction but you know what what would happen if that's the case yeah it's a further um generate a situation of all cycle elections uh, in Nigeria, gubernatorial elections in Nigeria. Uh, and we're not talking about San Francisco State alone now. Kano State is also implicated. If the decisions of the tribunal and the appeal tribunal is sustained at uh, the Supreme Court in Kano, again, for example, that would then mean that uh, the election calendar, gubernatorial election calendar in, in uh, Kano State will change uh, because the law has decided uh, and interpreted in uh, the case of uh, Obia and INEC is that the tenure of a governor will start running from uh, uh, the time 
he took the oath of office. Uh, when that debate was going on then, there was a lot of debate. And I bring this to the attention of Nigeria because only recently, the former president of Nigeria, uh, Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, commented on the issue of how distracting off-cycle election could be and wishing uh, that uh, it would be possible one day pass wide legislative intervention to have a kind of uh, uh, evenness so that we go back to the state of school, uh, in which case elections will be held at the same time. But when that debate was going on, uh, because it was an offshoot of what occurred in Anambra State, Nigeria should forget, an election petition determination took almost three years within the gain seat. And when we got in, we only had barely one and a half years uh, left. And he was contending that uh, that was not his tenure, that his tenure was four years. INET was going to hold an election, you know, uh, in tandem with the uh, four, four year cycle. But the matter went ultimately to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, no, the tenure will start running from when uh, the uh, uh, person yeah. took hold of office. And so, with that now, we're going to have more. Of that, and this can be distracting because that would mean that I may perpetually will be holding uh, elections all over the country. I don't think that that's what was originally intended, mm. and that was why, even when that debate was going on, then a number of jurists, including uh, former uh, Supreme Court justice, Justice Wife, and uh, Chief Ganifa, I mean, Senior Advocate of the Masses, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, of blessed memory, weigh in and they were contending. And I so contended with them at that stage that he, he, the constitution is a schema and that the four year tenure shouldn't be disrupted for whatever reason via judicial intervention and interpretation. But the Supreme Court had its way, as each should have its way uh, ultimately when matters are submitted to the court and ruled that yes, tenure will start running when uh, the person took hold of office. So, will that be the case now? We like you to have more disruptions of the process of the calendar, and we're going to have um, off-season, off-cycle uh, elections uh, in Nigeria. Of course, the only way to stop that is if elections conducted properly and uh, results are declared, you know, in a credible manner, and politicians, you know, uh, learn to accept defeat and allow the uh, process uh, uh, not to be disturbed. Otherwise, insofar as political elections are not, you know, fairly conducted, at least by court pronouncement, it means elections were not properly conducted. Mm. And politicians keep challenging the outcome of results. A uh, court will continue to pronounce, and you cannot condemn or blame the court for so pronouncing. And so ultimately, in the result, you are going to have these all cycle elections. Mm -hmm. If that's what the court decides. Well, uh, what Nigerians are expecting at the moment is that we should conduct a free, fair, and credible elections in the country. Let's look at some of the technicalities of uh, this particular election in Zamfara State. Uh, the uh, judge ruled that um, uh, INEC cannot solely rely on uh, the result of IREF. Uh, but a lot of Nigerians are wondering uh, the synergy of this. What is the coalition process? according to the law. Please walk us through this development. You know, look, and it is good that the court has again retreated this. And perhaps this uh, judicial reasoning, which is correct in my view, will sink in, particularly given the cynicism uh, that attended the determination of the, the presidential election. And, you know, a lot of Nigerians were wondering, you know, what was the use of IREP then? What was the use of uh, the electoral guidelines by INE? So are they saying that INE cannot be banned by its electoral guidelines, etc., etc.? The position of the law. First, uh, the position of coalition system is that, look, the law provides for manual coalition. Yes. There's electronic accreditation, manual ac accreditation of uh, voters and voting. Uh, thereafter, when results come out, when those ballot papers, I'm being basic now, being prosec, 
ballot papers, when they are removed from the box and the box is upturned, they are counted there. They are not electronically counted. They are physically counted. Then there will be electronic checks to ensure that they, they tally with uh, those who are accredited quite all right, but they are physically counted. After that physical counting and recording in the appropriate forms, from there, they are physically taken to the war center for collision so that at the war center, all the votes that have been passed in other polling uh, units in the world are brought together. From there, they are taken to the local government collection center so that all the wards that constitute the local government, their votes are tallied there. And from there, they are taken to the state collection center in gubernatorial election. In presidential election, from there, from the state, they are taken to the national collection center, which is Abuja. And we saw all that on television the last time. That's how it's done. And then the appropriate forms are filled in and the scores are recorded. What the courts are saying is that, yes, IRF is there. There will be a portal that will show how people voted, that will show results. But IRF is not a collation system as such. You can call IRF, a, for now, given what our courts are saying, you can call IRF a credibility or verification platform. And I've used this example before, and I hope Nigerians are listening. I've used this example before. You see, when a football match is being played, and Nigerians are clubbed to Europe now, watching leagues, every... All right, uh, it seems we lost our connection with um, uh, GT Ogunye, but we'll try to reconnect. We'll try to reconnect to him, but very interesting. And our joins indeed, like I said earlier, that uh, uh, they don't have, they don't really understand the connection between the IRF. Uh, is it? You, you had him saying it's not where you can use to collate our results, but some Nigerians are not. Um, uh, knowledgeable about this uh, development because they, they'll be wondering why is it that a, a result on IRF is not in tandem? Right. Mr. Ogunye is, is back. Mr. Ogunye okay. is back. Kindly can ca continue with carry your line on of with course. that point. Yeah. Very, very, uh, you know, in <laughs> Thank instructive. You. Thank you. I was saying that, you know, it's like a, um, a verification platform. So if you use the example of a football match, for example, I've used this example before. Right. What you see is that when a football match is being played, you see the referee with a small pad, with a small note in his hand, where he records the results. He records it, you know, beautifully. Once a, 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 a goal is scored, he pulls it out and records it there and puts it in his breast pocket. However, you see the uh, electronic system, you know, a viewing board at the stadium showing the results. So the way to determine the outcome of the match is to look at what the referee has done. People can have it in their head that, yeah, we viewed it on the scoreboard now, that that's the score. But what the courts are saying is that physically you still have to do that. Officials to officiate the match, they will record the score, they will have documents. It is not just the dashboard or rather the scoreboard that will determine the outcome of uh, that match. That's the point I'm making. Mm. What Nigerians wish to see is that the IRF will be used as solutions so that as they are living and as they are seeing it in real quick time, you don't see is believing. They can then say, oh, this is the person that has won the result or won the, 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 the election. The election. Mm. Our cost are saying that, yes, that is good. It is good for the credibility, for the transparency of our election. However, you can't sidestep the manual and physical collation of the results. Because at the end of the day, when you get to the court to confirm results and when the elections are being challenged or election outcomes are being challenged, you will rely on documentary evidence. You will rely on documents. Okay, you are not going to rely on uh, the score, you know, on uh, IRF. That's what courts are saying. That you can have IRF printouts, you can have whatever, but at the end of the day, you rely 
on documents. And I think that uh, given the state of our law, except the law is changed, except Absolutely. the electoral act is changed, our courts are right on this. Mm -hmm. Our people may not want to understand it, or may pretend that they don't understand it, or may feel that what the courts are saying, uh, you know, is around nonsense. You know, but the law is the law, and that's what the court have done. And mm -hmm. I think that I don't think that uh, people should continue to clobber the court or, you know, uh, pillory the court because of uh, uh, a fair and just interpretation of the provisions of our law. Right, Mr. Ogunye, the point is taken, and, you know, I, I also, you know, kind of like where you said that, um, you know, this issue about uh, the structure of IREV has, you know, more or less been asserted by the judiciary. Uh, so to speak. But, you know, looking at the interesting uh, judgment of uh, Friday regarding the Kano governorship election, uh, where once again the court, uh, you know, annulled the election, so to speak, of, um, you know, the governor who has said he's, he will appeal. But there's an interesting reaction from the NNPP. And, you know, that is their position that they got, you know, the lawful majority number of votes. Let's even remove the word lawful. They are saying they got the majority of votes. They got the will of the people. They got the mandate of the people. Well, now the courts are saying otherwise. And now they are also going on to say that INEC is the only constitutional authority to declare someone a winner. You know, help us, you know, understand the legal dynamics that, you know, this kind of position uh, uh, brings. Well, politicians say anything. Even when the final court in the land has decided, you still see politicians grandstanding, making pronouncements, uh, castigating the courts, um, attempting to be nuanced, but in a substantial manner, you know, still saying the same thing. They say, yeah, we accept uh, the judgment, but we respectfully disagree. Uh, the court shouldn't have done this, the court shouldn't have done that. Uh, we, we, the Nigerian people have not been uh, well uh, served and so on. They make all sorts of statements, you know, uh, stance and fury amounting to nothing. Um, so politicians will continue to be politicians. Even when the final court has decided the matter, they will continue to say what they're saying. So I don't think that we should dwell too much on what the uh, partisans are saying, the two political parties involved there. Uh, APC has said that they win again, you know. Uh, that's also uh, some political boast. Mm. Uh, I, you know, uh, NMPP is saying that no, they disagree. That's why they are going to appeal and all that. Look, they should um, concentrate on the appeal they want to lodge. And so they should go and sort it out there. And then uh, everybody will be banned at the end of the day with the pronouncement mm. of the Supreme Court on this. Yes, one but, thing though right, is right. that yes, one thing though is that um, when the matter is uh, submitted to court like that to an appellate court, um, the, the number of legal principles that govern them and will not discuss the merits or the merits of the case. One is that look, yes. Uh, in a number of cases, the Supreme Court has um, obtained uh, the concurring decisions of the two lower mm. tribunals, uh, appeal tribunal and uh, the tribunal, you know, in some cases. But uh, the well-known principle of the law is that uh, the court usually, the APS court usually does not make it a practice to disturb the concurring judgments of the two courts below. There is a presumption at the APS court that the two courts below are right. Uh, except in exceptional, you know, save exceptional cases when the court would disturb the findings, the court usually will not disturb the findings. That's number one. However, uh, number two, the court, as I said earlier, will not hesitate uh, to uh, determine the matter as it occurs to me, because the APS court is not banned owing to the principle of stare decisis uh, and precedence. The lower court can never, the upper court, the APS court, mm. can never be banned by a decision of the mm. two court below. And so it's free 
to determine the matter as it deems uh, fit at that stage. So we'll see what will happen. But um, just uh, an advice, you know, uh, you know, politicians will should exercise power when they get power with rationality, with sobriety, with um, conscience, with the fear of God. What many people want to see in the case of Kano, and I'm not saying Kano it is, is whether in the final analysis, those early days demolitions mm. of buildings mm. will hold. So if a governor, for example, realizes that his election is still being conducted, why should that governor, for example, just embark on that kind of thing there? I'm just wondering. And that's why many people say, look, tweak our electoral system, change our constitution, let election petitions be wholly and fully determined before swearing in any governor and all that. Because it's amazing and it surprises me that when there's still a contestation going in court, uh, a governor could embark on that kind of thing and then generate so much controversy around itself and all that which some people have called vindictive and all that. So it's important that a politician should exercise power with uh, conscience and with sobriety. Enough said on that. Uh, well, uh, going forward, um, what would be your advice uh, to uh, this set of politicians um, uh, in the country? Because in law, there is this uh, term which says, he that assert must prove beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, why is it that um, uh, some lawyers too will also push these politicians indeed to go and contest some of these cases in court, knowing full well that um, they cannot even win at that level? What's your advice to them? Yes, just a clarification on um, that statement of the law you try to make there. Um, in civil litigation, um, proof is not beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, it's only a criminal litigation. And when the criminal allegation that is, is being made, that you have that kind of standard of proof. In civil litigation, it's proof on the basis mm -hmm. of probabilities or on the basis of preponderance of evidence. So there's this imaginary scale. Uh, the person whose uh, evidence and everything is weightier than the other will carry the day. That's why you talk about uh, preponderance of evidence. In criminal, you know, uh, Prosecution, however, the standard of proof is different. It's beyond reasonable doubt. And it's obvious why it has to be like that. Because the person must be found to be the person that committed the act. However, in civil litigation where criminal allegations are being made, the standard of proof will change. It will be beyond reasonable doubt because there's an importation of criminal elements. So, for example, in an election petition, if the proof is that somebody had committed fraud in an election, or if the allegations that the person had committed fraud in an election, he had done something that is criminal, even though the matter is a civil matter, election petition is civil, that allegation, that particular allegation will have to be proved beyond reasonable doubt. So in this case, um, uh, generally in election petition cases, the difficulty of proving it's not just because mm. uh, some allegations that are made are criminal mm. in nature and therefore have to be proven beyond reasonable doubt. It's also because there's always difficulty in gathering uh, materials, in gathering evidence right. statewide or nationwide for uh, within 21 days to file a petition mm. that Absolutely. you can never amend or change and which you have to hold fast to uh, sink or sail with it. You know, Absolutely. When a filed a petition. So it's a pretty, a pretty difficult task. All right. Uh, JT Ogunye there, a Lagos-based uh, public interest lawyers, uh, lawyer, we thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on TVC Breakfast Saturday. Many thanks again. Yes, yes my pleasure. Thanks so much.